Are we ready here or what? Greatest integer function as in y equals int x is how you would find it on the calculator. It just means the greatest integer in whatever number you come up with. Greatest integer of 2.7 is 2. It's the integer to the left of the thing. So greatest integer in everything from 0 up to 1 is that. But as soon as, you're at, as soon as you hit 1, the greatest integer is 1, right? And then as soon as you go to the right of 1, it's there until you get to 2. And then it's like that. That kind of uh, that kind of discontinuity is called a jump discontinuity. It jumps from one value to another. <clears throat> okay, so every integer that's where there's a jump discontinuity, right? That's the only reason I wanted to show you that. Points of continuity is all the other points, right? All except, I don't know, x equals 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Points of discontinuity is 0, plus or minus 1. Every integer, it's discontinuous. It jumps from one value to another. As you're, as you're coming from one side, it suddenly jumps up to another value. For it to be discontinuous, what you think is supposed to be happening as you come from the right is not the same as what actually happens at that point. If you're if you're coming towards one from the from the left here, it looks like it's headed for zero. Suddenly it jumps up to one. That's why it's a discontinuity. Okay, we said before lunch that the to make something continuous, the limit has to match what the function value is. What actually is true at that point has to match what it looks like is happening, how the function behaves near that point. Okay? Um, so that's one kind of discontinuity. Do I have it on the picture here? I actually have it down here. This was a jump discontinuity. If you were to write a statement for that, well, the limit doesn't actually even exist at zero. The limit from the left and the right are different. If you wanted to show that it's discontinuous, all you would have to say is, um, the y value at 0 is 1. Well, that's not the same as the limit as you come from the left. As x approaches 0 from the left, from the negative side of f of x, that's actually 0. That would be a way to show it. Um, 0 from the negative side is different. It has to be the same from both sides, right, for it to be continuous. But just the, the words right now are what we're looking at. <coughs> Um, some of the other ones up here, this first function is continuous, right? This is continuous at x equals 1. This is actually a continuous function, but it has a discontinuity at 0. This is called a removable discontinuity. It's a removable discontinuity because usually when you have functions like that, you can remove that discontinuity by simplifying it or just defining it differently. Remo removable because you could remove the discontinuity, as in you can make it continuous just by filling in that value. The way you fill in the value algebraically is either define the function to be, it looks like it's supposed to be 1 there, so you could make it 1 if it's just making it kind of a piecewise function, or you could simplify a, a fraction algebraically. This is still a removable discontinuity, even though it has a point defined up above here. Okay, both of those are. Whether it's defined or not. Uh, if you graph y equals 1 over x squared, perhaps we'll do this on the calculator. One divided by xx. Now I really like doing that. <coughs> zoom, we'll go back to that zoom decimal. At zero, what's happening there? If we if we make the vertical scale larger so we can see it here. So if we're going from negative one to, I don't know, 20 or something like that. I don't know why I'm going from negative one. Negative... 5 to 30, how about that? This might be too much all at once, but what happens in the middle there? 
What happens to those two pieces as you go up to the top there? The higher I make this, 100. It's infinite, but what, are they connected, those two pieces? No. They are not, right? They sure, they sure aren't. <laughs> if you trace along the curve here, right, anywhere on the curve, it gives you a value down at the bottom. But when you get to zero, this is there's no value there. It's undefined, right? That's an infinite discontinuity, even though it's, I mean, infinite, it could be that the two curves go opposite ways. If it has sort of a vertical asymptote, this is just called an infinite discontinuity. So it looks something like this. I don't know if I hit the right points there, but you get the idea, right? It's undefined in that uh, in that middle uh, at zero. <clears throat> Sine of one over x. Sine one divided by x. See what it looks like for yourself there. Uh, I, you need to be on radian mode. Okay, it sort of looks like that now. I'm going to zoom in on the center of the thing, though, and you'll see what's happening here. Maybe we'll do this zoom box because maybe you've never used that before. It's more intuitive to see what we're zooming in on. Remember, this is a very low-definition calculator, so it doesn't show you a lot of detail when the curve changes quite a bit. So we're just trying to zoom in on this part. should use the other graphing program, and we will in a minute here. Okay, the more you zoom in on it, the more of that that's going to happen here. Uh, I am going to go back to this now. No, not that. Where is it? There it is. <clears throat> if you, this will just let us change the window more quickly. But you can keep zooming in on it on your calculator and see what's happening. Okay, so uh, y equals sine of 1 over x. Okay, now try and see what's happening here. As I, as I increase this here, what's happening the closer you get to the middle there? It's dark. It stays dark. Yeah, but what's happening with the curve? The more you, uh, the more I'm spreading out, you're allowed to, you know, you're seeing what's in the middle there. Now it was not going to let me go anymore with this, but change the scale. It goes up and down more and more quickly. There, you know, more and more often, the closer you get to the middle. That's about the limit of where it'll let me do it the quick way here. But that's. Uh, it's, it oscillates more and more as you get close to the middle. If you kept going and make the scale more zoomed in, you'd see that it oscillates more and more. Think about what's happening with the values. The values are sine of 1 over x. 1 over x, as you make x closer and closer to 0, 1 over x is getting bigger and bigger. As the values get bigger and bigger, when you do the sine of those values, they just keep going, right? As, as sine goes farther and farther... It just oscillates between 1 and negative 1. 1 over x gets changes quick, more quickly and quickly the closer you get to that. Okay, It's just oscillating back and forth. It's called an oscillating discontinuity. It doesn't come up that much, but it is a kind of discontinuity. Because in the center, you don't know what's happening, right? It's undefined in the center. Is it up? Is it, is it at the top, at the bottom? It's undefined at 0, right? These are all discontinuous because x can't be 0 here, right? But it oscillates more and more the closer you get. I can't remember which side it started on, but uh, it kind of goes like that, right, in the middle. You can draw a good picture of yourself and write something down, but oscillating discontinuity. Just so we have some words for different types of discontinuity. <clears throat> oscillating. Oscillating. 